One of the things that's a challenge is linking data. So, you know, you need to have some, if you're linking different data sources, you need something unique for data fields. So for example, if you had different databases of doctor things like claims data or patient record data, you need to make sure that you've got a unique identifier that you can link the data sets. And that's sometimes quite difficult to do. We have seen in a number of fields that uh, what now it's called artificial intelligence usually is identified with deep learning and it's identifying with this set of technologies that have come up in the last several uh, years. But when I look at the project that you have been described, I've, uh, in my mind, I pictured these things where you have a detection phase, which typically utilizes some of the deep learning, but then you have also this other part, which is targeting the right people. And so, uh, so you, have, you have a process. You know? mm. uh, if you had to think at high level, how much of your solutions today are better because of the recent development of, um, if you like, uh, technology such as uh, deep learning and so on, how much of it instead is uh, better because of the availability of real-time data processing, so the infrastructures of really of artificial intelligence, and how much of it is still limited because something else is missing? What would you say to people? I think that uh, certainly deep learning has taken great strides forward um, in the recent years, and it has made a lot of things possible that were much harder before. I also believe technologically speaking, if you're thinking about the tech stack, that's improved a lot as well. You know, when we first did Next Best Action Modeling, we had to come up with everything from scratch because there weren't a lot of the, well, not everything, but there were a lot of components of the stack that just didn't exist. Whereas now there's so many really intelligent companies coming out, uh, startups coming up with different parts of that, that you can leverage a lot of the other companies out there, um, their, their technologies in the stack. So that changes a lot. It makes projects a lot quicker, a lot cheaper, a lot easier. Uh, so that's a really important um, improvement as well as the, the different types of um, AI and deep learning and um, natural language processing and all the different advances that we're seeing in lots of different um, fields within AI. But is there something or, or a particular area where you still feel that the solution is not up to, um, that basically technology is not yet capable of solving the problem and, and you have to sort of uh, be happy with uh, sub-optimal solutions because of this. If, if there was an area where you say, um, you know, this is not up to it, what would be in the pharmaceutical splash medical applications that you are uh, pursuing? <laughs> I think, well, I think all of them for data. <laughs> you know, so data is the biggest issue. But I think, I think, yeah, I mean, one of the things that's a challenge is linking data. So, you know, you need to have some, if you're linking different data sources, you need something unique for data fields. So, for example, if you had different databases of doctor things like claims data or patient record data, you need to make sure that you've got a unique identifier that you can link the data sets. And that's sometimes quite difficult to do if the data sets aren't set up that way, which is, you know, it would be a lot easier if a lot of the data sets were set up in, um, in a different way.